Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Clifford Brooks, and I'm lucky enough to be a part of Luke Johnson's Noetic program. And today, in the realm of poetry, I'm going to step back to a poet that is dear to my heart as it is to many, Mr. Walt Whitman. And today, I'm going to cover the poem, at least, or in earnest, the first part of Song of the Open Road. Walt Whitman paved the way in writing poetry in a vernacular that speaks to people in the common form directly, in words that are accessible, with imagery that is beloved to those who love nature, those who love freedom, those who wish to have a life that's better, those who love to read poetry and at the end not wonder what he's talking about or what she's talking about. This is a poem that as the seasons lighten up, it's still being winter, but here at least in Georgia, with cold weather, we have more sunshine. And as those, maybe as I've described in the past, as winter comes here in Georgia or across the world, as especially those with daylight savings times and the, and the days get shorter and we all get a little bit more sad, I want to begin this rejuvenation of noetics with the poet uh, section here with Luke Johnson with Walt Whitman, Song of the Open Road. It's a poem of hope, a poem of there is no boundaries, there are no limits, there is no worth of self except for the self itself. And as cryptic as that might sound, really it, is, it resounds in so many people and the independence we feel. I never get political, but it is a time where we as people need to realize that being a part of a group is fine, but always being aware of who we are as individuals is what's far more important because it also leads us to know what group best fits us. And for me, it's intelligence and freedom and couth, tact and friends who share a similar vision and hope. So here we go. Song of the Open Road. Afoot and lighthearted, I take to the open road. Healthy, free, the world before me. The long brown path before me leading wherever I choose. Henceforth, I ask not good fortune. I myself am good fortune. Henceforth, I whimper no more, postpone no more, need nothing. Done with indoor complaints, libraries, querulous criticisms, strong and content, I travel the open road. The earth, that is sufficient. I do not want the constellations any nearer I know they are very well where they are. I know they suffice for those who belong to them. Still here, I carry my old delicious burdens. I carry them, men and women. I carry them with me wherever I go. I swear it is impossible for me to get rid of them. I am filled with them and I will fill them in return. It's empowering. It is, it is, it is enlivening. It's, it's one of those things, it's almost like licking a light socket that says, get outside, go find something real. Go you know, look to the stars and realize the stars are where they're supposed to be. And those who always gaze up and dream and wish they were the stars, I don't want that. I'm glad they're where they are because I'm here in the real world, making a real difference putting my hands, as Walt Whitman did, into literally the blood of war, where as a nurse, he helped those and read poetry to those during the Civil War who were in the hospitals and seen horror we can't imagine. And I'm never one to stand up in a pulpit and say that poetry, art in general, is more noble than anything else on earth, but it is a noble art. And Whitman did it until he emotionally, physically couldn't do it anymore. And that's nothing to slight him because I've not been to war. I've been in very few fist fights as it is on earth. But to be able to see the bloodshed that he did, to sit down next to them 
and to hear the gratefulness that so many expressed to him to give them the words of hope. Maybe not even his words. Some of them were, but he read others, the, the soldiers who were laying in beds and saw that their, their youth had been stripped from them. Their innocence had been gone from them. The first line of this poem, its first section, afoot and lighthearted, I take to the open road. And that could be someone who has left a bad relationship, who has found a new job, who has realized their dream, afoot and lighthearted. All of your troubles set down and forgotten. I take to the open road, no toll roads, no speed limits, no one impeding your way, no one driving so slow that you wanna curse, but just you on the road, walking, driving, even in your mind, free on the open road. Healthy, free, the world before me. The long brown path before me leading wherever I choose. That's a freedom that we neglect. As we get older, we feel like that path narrows, that the destination there at the end is too close for us to ever think that when we get there, we'll find our dream. Walt Whitman eschewed all of that. Walt Whitman expelled the idea that we can't at any point in life find a dream that becomes reality when we walk far enough, when we work far enough, hard enough to get there. Henceforth, I ask not good fortune. I myself am good fortune. I mean, it's very utilitarian. It's extremely self-reliant. I don't ask for favors. Existentialism in its purest form. I don't want anything from anybody because I myself am good fortune. I make my good fortune. I will fight for my good fortune. Henceforth, I whimper to no one. Postpone no more. Need nothing. Freedom. Freedom is what he's talking about. Done with indoor complaints. Those small little things that always used to haunt us. The when you get distance, but you know, from it, even bad relationships, or you look back to high school or even last year at some problem that you thought was insurmountable that now is laughable. You're done with it. It's in the past. You have grown. Spread your wings. Postpone no more. Those those three words echo in me deeper than, than I can sit here and have time to explain. Pain, regret, hurt of all kinds can be dealt with in therapy or with friends or just over time. But regret, regrets to the bone. Regret lasts forever. To fix regret is to have to go back in time and that's impossible. Need nothing. Now, I don't think that Walt Whitman said that we don't need food, we don't need love, we don't need hope, we don't need uh, shelter, but need not for the approval of others. Need not for someone to say, what you're doing is good, what you're doing is okay, I believe in that. Need nothing but your own belief and sense of self. Done with indoor complaints. I believe that to think of Maybe in a job that you didn't like with those who complained incessantly about hating being there yet did nothing about it. Those who were in your, in your inner circle who were so upset with their relationships yet did nothing about it. To be done with that. To still care about them, but not let that impede your way to a future that best suits you. Libraries. Querulous criticisms. Now, of course, Walt well, women love libraries, but you're only going to learn so much from books. You hear the two ways of life, two things of people, and one of those are those who are street smart and those who are book smart. And I don't believe that. I believe that when you read a roadmap, that you can drive to find that destination. That when you open a book and you find some inspiration, you can go out there with an idea that that book has given you and find something similar. Querulous criticisms. We all face that. 
and I have faced many of those. Luke has faced many of those. All the friends that I know that have made any of them make something of themselves have found those querulous criticisms. It's 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 akin to the idea, the maxim that I've heard time and time again, that wolves do not consider the opinions of sheep. That is not to be confrontational with people without provocation. It does not mean to me that it doesn't mean that you don't care or listen to those who have various opinions. But for those who are simply haters that don't like the direction you're going because it proves to them that if you can do it, they can do it. It's not something you should carry around. Strong and content, I travel the open road. You hear, you feel Walt Whitman putting down these things that he has dealt with that I mentioned before as I see it. These, these, these small suits that don't fit anymore, these small ideas that cramp the mind. He is now strong and content, happy to himself and with himself to travel the open road. The earth, that is sufficient. The whole of it. Nothing holds you back but you. At least in my life here at 41 years of age, I'm not old, but too old to be in the club, but I am long enough on the road to say that what holds you back is you. No matter your color, your race, your belief system, what holds you back is you, not them. And to Walt Whitman, it is the whole of the world set before him, not against him. I do not want the constellations any nearer. I know they are very well where they are. I know they suffice for those who belong to them. I believe that he, as anyone has, and if you haven't, I really wish you would, when the weather clears, when the sky is clear, and you're away from all the city lights, that you take time to look up at the constellations, to admire the stars. I myself have been so busy so much of the time that only recently at night have I looked up and said, that's gorgeous. It's beautiful. But right here is just fine. And those that have passed on, those that we have loved, that have gone on in the next world, to the next life, to heaven, those stars are good for them. But my life is still here. Still, here I carry my old, delicious burdens. As much as we want, as I wish that things didn't bother me, we still have some of those burdens. We still have bills. We still have friends, acquaintances that we wish that we didn't have to talk to, but we still have them around. But the word he uses is delicious. Delicious burdens. It reminds us that we're human. And without any judgment in my tone, and I don't believe in Walt's tone, I'm not judging these people, but they remind us of how far we've come, how much of ourselves we've become. Not how far we've been held back, how we can't move anymore forward because it's just too heavy. Because earlier in this first part, he's already spoken that I've set this down. Yet it doesn't mean that we don't still have to deal with it. I carry them, men and women. I carry them with me wherever I go. Doesn't mean bad things. Doesn't mean that they are the burdens that make us worry our next step will be over a cliff or that it will be a misstep into danger. It just means that along the way, we remember the lessons that weren't so pleasant, yet we remember those lessons nonetheless. It's another maxim that I've heard. A mistake is not a mistake unless you continue to do it. That it's a learning experience if you take that lesson the first time to heart. I swear it is impossible for me to get rid of them. I am filled with them, and I will fill them in return. This can move from the delicious burdens that remind you of who you are to remind you that those who are the most important to you should stay very close. They filled me, not with negativity, not with hatred, not with anger. They filled me with love. They helped me know who I am. And no matter how far I walk, I will write them letters. I will think of them. I will pray for them. And I will fill them in return. This first part of Song of the Open Road by Walt Whitman 
as one of the most empowering besides perhaps Invictus that I read several weeks ago to give me a sense of strength in myself. That when days get too short, when it is too dark, when depression seems too close and those black dogs bark too often, that the whole world is ours. That the open road is set before us, not as a challenge, but as something to be excited about, to eschew those who are just wanting us to fail, to prove that if we can't make it, they can't make it. That we remember those who are there to lift us up and never, ever fail to lift them up in return. It's a precious opening to the poem to me. So let me read it to you one more time. Song of the Open Road. A foot and light-hearted, I take to the open road. Healthy, free, the world before me. The long brown path before me, leading wherever I choose. Henceforth, I ask not good fortune. I am good fortune. Henceforth, I whimper no more, postpone no more, need nothing. Done with indoor complaints, libraries, querulous criticisms, strong and content, I travel the open road. The earth, that is sufficient. I do not want the constellations any nearer. I know they are very well where they are. I know they suffice for those who belong to them. Still. Here I carry my old delicious burdens. I carry them, men and women. I carry them with me wherever I go. I swear it is impossible for me to get rid of them. I am filled with them and I will fill them in return. I truly wish that you read this whole poem. And there are 15 sections as I believe and I hope next week I'll follow this up with Captain My Captain. And it's about as political as I'll ever get. And I promise not to swamp you in it. Luke Johnson, and I cannot thank you enough for allowing me to be a part of this. And I hope and know that Noetic will reach much farther than just me. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you.